Is everyone ready? Let's get ready for chemistry! Ah! If I want to calculate the molar mass of a molecule that I've got, it's a fairly straightforward matter. So let's look at how to do this. We want to total up the number of atoms in this molecule. There's one sodium, there's one nitrogen, and there's three oxygens. Now we need a periodic table. We can see that sodium has a molar mass of 22.99. Nitrogen's got a molar mass of 14.01, and oxygen's got a molar mass of 16. Now if we multiply those together, and then add that all up, we'll get the molar mass for sodium sulfate. The important thing about molar mass is the number, the number is important, but more important than the number is the units. So we want to take the molar mass and we want to stamp it with the units. So whenever you write down a molar mass, whenever you grab a molar mass from the periodic table, you always want to stamp it with the units, grams of the molecule for every one mole of the molecule. So the molar mass for this is 85 grams of sodium nitrate for every one mole of sodium nitrate. That's going to be really important when we go to use the molar mass later on in calculations. Pretty straightforward? Think you can do it? Give it a try! There are six carbons, there are 12 hydrogens, and there are six oxygens. Now we want to go look for their molar masses on the periodic table. Remember that molar mass is the decimal number. This number is the atomic number. That's just the number of protons. That's not the number we want. We want the average atomic weight. So for hydrogen, 1.01. For carbon, 12.01. And for oxygen, 16. So all of that adds up to be 180.18, and then it needs to be stamped with units. Grams of sugar for every one mole of sugar. So we have the number, 180.18, always goes with the grams, and then it's always one mole on the bottom. What if you have parentheses to contend with? What does this mean? There's three magnesiums, and there's two phosphates. So when you're totaling up the atoms, what do you do with the number outside the parentheses? Well, if you look at my picture, I've got three magnesiums, I've got two phosphoruses, and I've got eight oxygens. So what do you do with this number? You would multiply this by two, and you would multiply this by two. Would you multiply the magnesium by two? No, because the two only applies to everything in parentheses. Did I just put down a P for P? That was not intelligent. Okay, then magnesium's molar mass, we're gonna need to find that, we're gonna need to find phosphoruses, and we're gonna need to find oxygens. Let's start with magnesium. 24.3. Thirty point nine seven and sixteen. So magnesium was twenty four point three, phosphorus was thirty point nine seven, and oxygen was sixteen. I don't actually have to stop and multiply them in a separate step. I can just do all of this in my calculator. I could say three times twenty four point three plus two times thirty point nine seven plus eight times sixteen. And if you even have a half-decent calculator, it will do order of operations correctly. And you'll get the right answer. So 262.84. And then we stamp it. Bingo. And then we have our molar mass. And we're ready to use it. Think you understand parentheses? Give this one a try. We have two aluminums and we have three oxalates. So this three 
gets multiplied by the carbons and the oxygens. We have two aluminums. We have two, four, six carbons. So three times two is six. And then we have four, eight, 12 oxygens. So three times four is 12. Now we need to go find the molar mass of aluminum, carbon, and oxygen. Aluminum has a molar mass of 26.98. Carbon has a molar mass of 12.01. And oxygen has a molar mass of 16. Aluminum has a molar mass of 26.98. Carbon's is 12.01 and oxygen's is 16. 2 times 26.98 plus 6 times 12.01 plus 12 times 16 is 318.02. Needs units. Very important, stamping the units on there. The units will tell you what to do with the molar mass once you've got it. So whenever you write down a molar mass from the periodic table, make sure you stamp it with units. Ionic salts will often make hydrates. They'll pick up water from the atmosphere and bind that water to themselves. So here you have two sodiums, you have a carbonate, and then you have ten waters. So you have sodiums, carbons, oxygens, and hydrogens. Here's one way to go about doing this problem. You can say you've got two sodiums, one carbon, three oxygens, and 10 oxygens makes 13 oxygens, and then 10 times two is 20 hydrogens. Sodium's molar mass is 22.99. Hydrogen's molar mass is 1.01. Carbon's molar mass is 12.01. And oxygen's molar mass is 16. So that's one way to solve this problem. There's another way to solve this problem. You can decide if you think it's better or not. You could say, Water has a molar mass of 18.02 grams per mole. So every water weighs 18.02. Sodiums, carbons, oxygens, and waters. I've got 10 waters. I've got three oxygens. I've got one carbon. And I've got two sodiums. Every sodium is 22.99. Every carbon is 12.01. Every oxygen is 16, and every water is 18.02. So if you add all that up, you get 286.19, which was exactly the same answer we had before. Which way do you prefer? I guess it depends on how familiar you are with doing these. I know when I look at water that it's 18.02 because I've seen water show up in a lot of these. So it's faster for me just to say that there's 10 waters. But you can do whatever you want as long as you get the right answer. All right, let's see how you're doing. Can you solve this one? There's a beryllium. There's two nitrates. And there's four waters. This dot here does not mean that you're multiplying the mass of beryllium nitrate by the mass of the waters. The dot means that the waters are stuck to the beryllium nitrate. So we have beryllium, we have nitrogen, we have oxygen, and we have waters. We have four waters, we have six oxygens, we have two nitrogens, and we have one beryllium. Water is 18.02. We need oxygen, nitrogen, and beryllium. Oxygen is 16. Nitrogen is 14.01. And beryllium is 9.01. So when you add all these up, you get 205.11. And then we stamp it. 
bingo. And then we're ready to use our molar mass for all the stuff that we need to use molar mass for. Yay! Is everyone ready? Let's get ready for chemistry! Ah! <laughs>